how important was data to Newton? Okay. So like you mentioned uh, prism and playing with it and looking at stuff and then coming up with calculations and so on. Where does data fit into any of his ideas? All right, well, let me say two things first. One, we rarely use the phrase scientific method anymore because there is no one easily describable such method. In a certain, I mean, humans have been playing around with the world and learning how to repetitively do things and make things happen ever since you know, humans became humans. Mm -hmm. um, do, you have, do you have a preferred definition of the scientific method? What are the various... Uh, no, I don't. I prefer to talk about um, the considered manipulation of artificial structures to produce results that can be worked together with schemes to construct other devices and make uh, predictions, if you will, about the way such things will work. So ultimately, it's about producing other devices. It's like leads you down a... I a think so, principally. Uh, I mean, you may have data, if you will, like astronomical data obtained otherwise and so on, but yes. and but 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 number two here is this question of data. What is data in that sense? See, when we talk about data today... Um, we have a kind of complex notion which reverts to even issues of statistics and measurement procedures and so on. Mm -hmm. So uh, let me put it to you this way. So uh, let's say I had a ruler in front of me. Go on. And it's marked off in little black marks separated by, let's say, distances called a millimeter. Okay. Now I make a mark on this piece of paper here. So I made a nice black mark, right? Nice black mark. And I ask you, I want you to measure that and tell me how long it is. You're going to take the ruler, you're going to put it next to it, and you're going to look, and it's not going to sit, even if you put one end as close as you can on one black mark, the other end probably isn't going to be exactly on a black mark. Yep. Well, you'll say it's closer to this or that. You'll write down a number. And I say, okay, take the ruler away a minute. I take this away. Come back in five minutes. Put the piece of paper down. Do it again. You're going to probably come up with a different number. Yeah. And you're going to do that a lot of times. And then if I tell you, I want you to give me your best estimate of what the actual length of that thing is, what are you going to do? You're going to average all of these numbers? Why? Statistics. Well, yes, statistics. There's lots of ways of going around it, but the average is the best estimate on the basis of what's called the central limit theorem, a statistical theorem. We are talking about things uh, that were not really developed until the 1750s, 60s, and 70s. Right. Newton died in 1727. The, the intuition perhaps was there. Not right. really. I'll tell you what people did, including Newton, although Newton is partially the one exception. We talked a while ago about this guy, Christian Huygens. He measured lots of things, and he was a good a mechanic himself. Mm -hmm. He and his brother ground lenses. Huygens, I told you, developed the first pendulum mechanism, pendulum-driven clock with a mechanism and so on. Also, a spring watch, where he got into a controversy with Hook over that, by the way. Um, What's now, with these mechanics uh, well, and they, the controversy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we also have Huygens's notes. Um, they're preserved at the at Leiden University in Holland. He's Dutch uh, for his work in optics, which was extensive. Well, we don't have time to go into that, except the following: uh, a number of years ago, I went through those things because in this optical theory that he had, there are four numbers that you've got to be able to get good numbers on to be able to predict other things. So what would we do today? What in fact was done at the end of the 18th century when somebody went back to this? You do what you just, I told you to do with the ruler. You make a lot of measurements and average results. We have Huygens's notes. He did make a lot of measurements. One after the other after the other. But when he came to use the numbers for calculations, and indeed, when he published things at the end of his life, he gives you one number 
and it's not the average of any of them. It's just one of them. Which one was it? The one that he thought he got so good at working by practice that he put down the one he was most confident in. That was the general procedure at the time. You wouldn't publish a paper in which you wrote down six numbers and said, well, I measured this six times. Let me put them together. None of them is really, they would have said, the right number, but I'll put them together and give you a good number. Yeah. No, you would have been thought of that, you know, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. By the way, there's just an inkling of value to that approach. <laughs> just an inkling. <laughs> We sometimes use statistics as like a thing that like, oh, that solves all the problems. We'll just do a lot of it and we'll take the average or whatever it is. As, as many excellent books on mathematics have highlighted the flaws in our uh, approach to certain sciences uh, that rely heavily on statistics.